want to thank you for checking out this video. This is the Enlightened Control Lighting Control Software uh, quick video giving you an overview of the features we added in version 3.0. Uh, this video will be longer than most of the other videos mainly because we added so many features. Um, so let's get started. Um, I have a list here and I'm just going to go over each item. Uh, the first list, we improved support for the control wing on Enlighten and lots of minor changes and fixes. So obviously we're not going to go through the details of those. <clears throat> the first thing I have here on my list is um, hardware detect button. Um, that This little hardware detect button is helpful when you want to, um, if your dongle got disconnected or if you're using the Enlighten 1 console and one of the uh, USBs got disconnected, you can um, press the de detect DMX right here, this button right here, and it'll reinitialize any hardware that's connected. Um, it kind of makes things easier when things get disconnected. Uh, the next feature on my list is black color on palette. This is a simple thing, but uh, some people want it to be able to just fr go from a color to pure black. So very simple addition here. We have that little black palette for the colors. The next is the multi-save button for playbacks. Um, to show you this example, I'm probably going to have to just go a little bit deeper into the program uh, to show you this feature. It's very cool. So. Um, as you know, you can release or stack buttons depending on when you press them. So I'm going to press the bottom half of these two buttons. Um, so basically, I have these two buttons on. Again, this is not, uh, I'm not applying this to this uh, example. I just want to show you that I have two buttons pressed. If I go to my programming mode and I look here on my playback, it'll show me there are two playbacks running. And it shows me, um, you know, that they're both running and I can when I click on them um, it shows me which playback I'm on um, so the cool thing about the multi save which is this button right here what we did is now you're able to create a multi button without having to recall the other button so I have two buttons running there and let's say I like that look it's a combination of a bunch of things and I just want to recall one button and not have a complexity of having too many buttons all I do is I press save multi, enter my new name here, save, and now I, I've created this multi button. I'm going to go ahead and clear all here. And so when I press this button, no other buttons on the screen turn on. But if I go to my playbacks, it shows me that both those two playbacks are running. And again, I've basically uh, created that same look that I had before, except it's now being um, played back with one button. And my what's making up the multi button is hidden from the user, makes it making it a little bit more easier uh, to use that feature. Um, also, while I'm doing this, I can show you this new feature. Um, list five on my features. When you click a playback and you select the playback, what happens now is you'll notice that it'll select the fixtures that are controlled by that playback automatically. So you see when I uh, selected the first playback, I selected those Axis 500s. And if I select my other playback, it includes other fixtures that were also programmed in that button. So again, uh, you're able to just select the playback and it'll show you which fixtures are controlled by that playback. Another cool feature we added um, mainly to enhance the user's experience with the Enlighten 1 control wing and the Enlighten 1 console is these wheels below here. Um, basically these control wheels allow you to uh, control different traits uh, for the fixtures that are selected. So for instance, if I go ahead and grab my PARS here, uh, or I can grab my Axis LEDs, I have my red, green, blue, and I can use my mouse wheel or I can click down and move up and down to change the values. Also, if you obviously have the Enlightened Control Wing, you have those uh, 11 wheels on top that you can do this. Now, one cool thing about this is your pan and tilt will always be in the middle. And if you go to Gobo, uh, these fixtures don't have gobos. I'm going to select some fixtures with gobos. It'll select your gobo one wheel, your gobo two, and your focus and zoom will always be on the left and right and pan and tilt in the middle. So depending on which um, preset you pick, the ones on the outside change, but the focus, zoom, pan and tilt stay the same. It helps speed up programming 
so that you always know when you go to that wheel you'll be um, adjusting that attribute. Again, the new Enlightened One wheels in the new version of Enlightened 3.0. We also improved MIDI support to also, um, if you are using a um, universal MIDI controller, you can now assign the uh, Grandmaster and Blackout button to a MIDI note. So that's something very simple. Um, also, something that we've noticed is uh, a lot of people are using uh, fixtures with multiple gobo wheels, or um, in this case, I'll show you, uh, let's see. Uh, like in Beam, I have a general palette category called Beam. Well, that could be modifying a dimmer channel, a focus channel, an iris channel, pr prism, so on and so forth. So um, in, in doing this, I'm just basically giving you a description of what that preset does. Um, so that makes it easier to kind of organize your, uh, your presets. Also, what we did is we, um, I don't have an example here, but in the function, uh, tab if you basically have a lamp on or off on your fixture those presets will automatically be ge generated and put into your um, function presets we added a master pause button right here so when you press that pause button or the pause button on your keyboard it will pause all the sequences or buttons that are running um, and then again if you press it again it'll uh, start playing them again um, expandable size on on playback view one of the things uh, that a lot of customers were requesting is they wanted more real estate for buttons they were running out of room and so what we did is we did the expandable windows so basically when you press this um, you get a much bigger screen and of course if you're not using your submasters or um, you're using the enlightened control wing or console you don't need these because you actually have the hardware faders um, so this gives you basically more real estate and you can also hide the tap sync and other things. So that's another feature we added. We also moved a lot of these buttons to kind of free up some of the space here. So we have clear all, we have a release page, group buttons is up here, reset page, uh, which default mode, which is the button mode and then button wizard. Um, so all those have moved up here just to give us a little bit more room. We also added the ability to trigger a timeline button from another timeline button. I'm not gonna show you that, but uh, just uh, some of the advanced users would know what I'm talking about. Um, also, one of the other things we did in uh, those who, who use the matrix control, we added an audio tab. And the audio tab basically allows you to run like an EQ or uh, random uh, matrix patterns. Um, from here using your, your sound activation. So you do have a, to have an audio line in running. And I'll probably make another video describing how to use that, but I just wanted to give you an idea that it's there. Uh, we sped up the multi-button um, execution, basically making it quicker. Um, we also added a feature that a lot of uh, churches were asking for. They wanted the ability to duplicate a page because they're going to use that as their starting point and then modify that page. So if you right click on a button, you can select duplicate page and there you go. You have an exact copy and you can work from there to start. I'm going to go ahead and delete this page. Uh, again, duplicate page, another feature we added. We also added the ability to fade from stack buttons. And uh, let me see if I can show you this real quick. Basically what that means is if we have the welcome look there and then we stack the speaker look, when we release the speaker look, if we had a fade time there, it would basically fade back. Um, a lot of you will actually see that when you're um, stacking buttons and releasing, it'll instead of uh, shutting the look off and then fading back up, it'll basically cross fade directly back to where it was whichever the last button it, what that was active for that fixture uh, we else also added the ability to change the fixture number um, if you view edit start channel here the fixture number basically is this number right here 
And the reason uh, some people would want to change the fixture number is they'd want to change the order in which our effects, the e either the RGB effects or the MFX, how they're being implemented. So this will change that. And um, so again, you can now change the fixture number. You just basically set the new fixture number and close the dialog. It'll confirm and that will change the fixture number. Also, one of the things that we notice is when um, individuals are creating the, their own fixture, sometimes they forget to put the fixture name. So we basically just put a check in there. You have to name a fixture if you're creating one, uh, something very simple. Um, also, uh, something that is kind of uh, not well documented at this point, and we're just going to see if people actually use this, but if you actually press a button and activate it, and there's multiple steps in it. You, you can use your arrow forward and arrow left key uh, to step through the sequence, and you can use your arrow up to pause and play. So again, just kind of one of those features that someone asked for, and uh, we'll see if it gets used. If so, we'll add some documentation. We also added a bump option to the mouse. So um, some people wanted to be able to create a bump button. Instead of using the keyboard shortcut, they just wanted to um, press it so basically now with your mouse you can create a bump button um, by just right clicking and selecting and selecting it also in the audio trigger we added a skip beat option here so basically uh, you're able to skip 0, 2, 4, 8 or 16 beats uh, depending on um, your preference there one last thing that we added, and there's probably a lot more that uh, we're not talking about this today. I don't want to overwhelm you, but I just wanted to give you a good idea. We'll make some more videos later. The last thing is in what I found is in patching um, when you're addressing fixtures, having to right click and select uh, views, edit star channel would get a bit tedious. So what we did is we made it so that you can double click on the fixture and you can get all the information right there. So you can quickly get the start address uh, again, this box pops up just by double clicking. We want to thank you for watching this video. It's a preview of our release 3.0 and some of the features that are included in the new version. Hope you're enjoying using Enlighten. If you ever have any questions, we'll be happy to do a Skype session. My name is Winston. I'm with Mega Control Systems. Uh, our website is mega-lite.com. Thanks for watching.